All right, welcome to Cooking in a Tiny Kitchen with Auntie Crystal, or the Auntie Christ. Um, so what I have in my hands is a beautiful dark green shiny poblano pepper. This, um, this chile poblano is uh, going to be delicious when we are done with it. It's very simple. Um, and all you need in order to sort of uh, finish this recipe is the poblano pepper and some queso cheese and something to burn the skin of the pepper with. Some of us are lucky enough to actually have um, like an open flame burner to cook on or uh, we might have like a grill to just toss this puppy on. Um, what I have is really, really cool. It's called a Searsall and I like to burn things with it. Um, I like to make creme brulee and, and I like to sear nice juicy cuts of steak. Um, and it's also just incredibly good for getting an even, nice even sear or burn on the surface of whatever it is you're doing. Um, it doesn't tend to penetrate very deep with the heat and so it's, um, it's really great for things that are already cooked that you're worried about overdoing. Um, so today we're going to burn things. Um, everybody likes that, right? The very first thing you want to make sure that you have if you're in a space um, that's small and you're using something like a torch is you want a fire suppressant or you know, fire extinguisher. This could be a lifesaver. So this is very important um, that you have. You should probably have one in your kitchen anyways. Um, so there you go. Safety first. Um, the second thing that you're going to need is some form of fuel for your uh, Searsall, in my case, or, you know, I don't know, if you have a gas stove, you probably already have fuel for it. Um, I'm using propane. I like to use propane because it leaves less of an odor on whatever I'm searing. Um, and I think that's pretty desirable. Nobody wants to smell gas on their food. I don't, anyway. Um, so here we have the Searsall on top of a Burnsomatic torch. So I already have this set up. Um, if you have a Searsall, you'll follow the instructions to like install it onto um, your torch head. And then you'll take the torch head and hopefully nothing is stripped, so it'll be easy enough to screw onto your propane bottle. And you'll screw it on there, really nice and tight, so you have a good seal. And we are almost ready to begin. So there's a little button here, on off. I'm going to turn it on. You can hear that gas. Right away I'm going to start lighting it though, so that the gas doesn't have a chance to puff into the air and um, you know, cause things to catch on fire. So I have a chile poblano, or pro which is uh, already partly burnt. Keep in mind that uh, poblano chiles are often confused with pasillas. When I bought these at the grocery store, they were labeled as pasillas. They are not pasillas. Poblano chile, when dried, is called chile ancho. Chile ancho means um, wide chili, which makes them perfect for stuffing. You could use these puppies for chile and nogada, and a uh, whole lot of other kinds of chile relleno. You'll notice when I'm using the Searsall, I'm moving it in kind of a circular motion and oops, see, puff, just like that. Let too much gas out before turning it on. Turn up the heat a little. whatever you're searing sort of parallel to the grid on the Searsall. You're not going to really want to be jamming the Searsall onto anything that you're cooking. So you really wouldn't want to go pat, pat, pat. 
like that, that's not good. It might ruin the that little piece of mesh that's helping to spread out and evenly distribute the flame. I really like hearing it snap and crackle. It's nice. It's a nice sound. your cutting board um, you may actually decide that it's better if you um, don't use wood maybe use like a metal grate or something that's lifted up over a metal tray um, this is a beautiful cutting board it now has a few burns on it that's fine with me When you are kind of going at this with the, the sears all, um, you want to make sure that it's as even as possible and you don't want any like white charred bits. So even if you're doing this, I don't know, um, on a gas flame or if you're, uh, if you want to try using a broiler, you can do it that way. Um, it won't be as even with the broiler and the bits of charred skin will be a lot harder to take off. Um, you may also want to use sort of heat proof mitts or gloves, something to protect your hands from the flames. I don't have any. Um, I don't recommend you try this like this at home. Um, my hands aren't very sensitive. But that's really no reason to, you know, burn the crap out of them. There you have it. This looks like a very nice nicely toasted, almost perfectly burnt chile poblano. Okay, so you'll notice when you stop, this is incredibly hot. You can see that glowing orange center. You're going to need somewhere to set this, this torch, um, so it doesn't roll over and burn something that you care about. Uh, I don't know, you know, send you to the hospital. Um, all kinds of horrible things can happen. Uh, I happen to have a metal sink with a divider and it is great for setting this in. So I can just kind of set it there, loop it over, and it's not going to touch anything. It's just going to hang there and cool. Um, for our next step, you can take a look at this first. So you can see that this wonderful Chile Poblano is mostly burnt. You can look at all that. like. It looks like it has grayscale. Any of you watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> okay, so now we are going to take this um, beautiful chile and we're going to remove the burnt skin. We don't really want to eat the burnt skin. I, I don't think you want to eat it either. Um, so there are a couple of ways of doing this. You can either use a paper towel or you can use gloves, um, both of which I have, but don't really feel the need to use. This is relatively easy to peel off. It just kind of comes off. Um, right now, I guess if I were you, I would let this chile kind of cool off for a little bit before peeling it. You can see there's a little bit of steam rising off as I um, take the skin away. It's because it's hot. Um, I'm lazy though and I don't know, I want to just get this over with, done with, right? We want to eat these wonderful chiles. I'm impatient. As you can see, it just coming off. My hands are clean. Always wash your hands um, when you cook. Our next step, now that we've removed most of the skin from this beautiful poblano, is we're going to take, get rid of the, you know, get rid of the skin off the cutting board because we're still going to use this cutting board. Um, so we'll throw this out first and then we're going to get a knife. Um, we'll take that knife and we are going to cut 
around the top and de-seed the chile. So we're making it hollow, nice and hollow. Part of the reason why you de-seed chile is when you cook um, is because the chile, the, these little seeds themselves, they can be quite bitter. They also provide a texture that some people might not like. And they can also be very, very spicy. So if you don't want um, to burn your mouth and uh, you, you really just don't like uh, that overwhelming feeling of burnt mouth, then I would suggest you remove all of the little seeds. Poblano chiles happen to be quite mild in nature. So they're not an aggressive chile. They're not a chile that is really going to hurt you, hurt your mouth much, but maybe one in 10 can be quite spicy. For this reason, when I make these, I typically cook up a few at a time and I cut them into little squares and then I divide those little squares um, so that when I serve them to people, everyone gets sort of a wide variety of flavor. Okay, now this beautiful chile has been deseeded. The next step is to take our queso fresco. So it's, it's not just queso, um, but it's queso fresco. Queso fresco is wonderful, salty, fresh, and soft. And we are going to stuff this puppy full of it. It is gonna be so delicious. I wonder why you've never made this before. It's so easy. It's so fast, even though my video is quite long. And well worth the time. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do if you so desire. One is, if your, if your chile is substantially hot enough, you can take it and put it in a bowl with saran wrap over it and just let its heat melt the cheese that's inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on a tray covered in parchment in my toaster oven. I find this method much more satisfying. It cooks, it's nice, I don't have to like worry about burning my hands and I don't have to use saran wrap. Yeah, that would be happiness. All right, so what we have left is to wait for that beautiful chili to finish and then it's done. This is what they'll look like once they're done. So I've cut them up already into these little squares. You can see the cheese inside and I'm gonna eat this. Mm, that is perfect. Mm. <laughs>